Yeah. So, uh, name's Penn. Been rolling with the Squad Ops guys for a while now, and uh, been really enjoying it. And been on uh, Alpha 8 here since it was released, having a great time. Nice, Puga. Yeah, Pugachev. Been with the Ops for a couple months now. Fucking chilling here for, uh, what, since B6, probably? Just uh, been at it with the Ops, fucking organizing SOTT and stuff. Great group of people here to have fun. All right, so Puga helps us with our SOTT, which is our squad ops tactics and training. It's a public course that we have that basically helps players get on the same page with our ops guys, as well as just teaches new players the basics. of. So it's a great uh, kind of program that we run, and it's open to everyone. So if you feel free to join that and or you want to learn something, go ahead and join that. Uh, Hyper, you want to go and do, uh, do your introduction now? Sure, I'm ready now. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, I'm Hyper Evo. Everybody probably knows me most as uh, the medic. Yeah, especially Karma's medic, it seems like. I've <laughs> uh, been around for a while. I've been here since like around December, January time frame of playing uh, the uh, squad. And I've been here since the beginning of Squad Ops. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's the uh, crew we have here today. And the number one thing we're going to talk about, of course, is V8. So V8 literally just dropped about five hours ago, I'd say. Um, and we're going to go over first impressions, what we like, what we don't like. Uh, but basically, this this whole ops gas is going to be about V8. So let's uh, let's start here with what do you guys think initially of frames? The the, the big thing with V8 was optimization. How, have you guys seen a huge increase, or has it been about the same? What's the general feel that you guys get? Uh, let's start with hyper. Oh my God, the frames have been boosted big time. I mean, big time. I'm hitting like steady 80 or 90 on a hit on a 1080. So yeah, they've definitely been boosted. Ten, what are your experience? Definitely, yeah. Noticed a, a a big improvement right off the bat. Um, they promised optimization, and I think they really delivered. Yeah, how are your frames? I remember back playing V six, <laughs> and I was like, these frames are are pretty good, I guess. They're not so bad. And then V seven dropped, and I was like, man, this sucks. <laughs> and then like this came around and i was like this is better than v6 and i could play with like these new light boxes and stuff the, the sky boxes and like the, the light on the maps all changed and like the frames are just like way better than they ever were before and i'm running like on the laptop and i'm getting like 60 fps half the time like this is it's uh, i'm just i'm impressed yeah this patch is pretty amazing with the amount of optimizations and fps increase i will say they did come at a slight cost um, there are, there's something odd about the lighting on some maps. I mean, some maps are absolutely gorgeous, but other maps are kind of feel a little washed out. And then the level of detail seems to be a little wonky. Like it's not rendering things properly. Some things are really Play-Doh looking. Um, but the FPS increase is insane. I'm getting about 80 frames, a hundred frames with a 1080 up from like 60 and 50. So I've almost got a, a, yep. a double um i've almost doubled my frames so i mean the patch did was it what it was supposed to do and it you know with these frames a lot more players are going to have accessibility to squad definitely i mean hell i'm i'm running on a 1440p and i'm hitting like 90 to 100 on maps and the other maps i'm running about 80 so that just tells you how big of an improvement they've done so far yeah and and so you know with the optimization i think you're right karma it does certainly come at a cost but yeah um, and i think one one um like a strategy they've used to up the FPS is on Samari, for example. Looks like they've dropped the draw distance. Uh, they've scaled it back a little bit. If you have a chance to go into admin cam uh, and, and kind of go above the city, you'll you'll notice that buildings farther in the distance um, just aren't aren't there. They're not they're not not rendered. And you know it's fine um, when you got lots of fog. But it'll be interesting to see how they're able to keep uh, performance high on some of the larger maps where you actually got to have the detail at a distance. Yeah, so that brings up... Uh, so let's talk about Sumari, and we'll talk about Kohat. So Sumari, like you said, you know, they added that kind of smoke, that fog, that kind of dust uh, effect, and it kind of limits your visibility. And what that does is that it decreases the amount of draw calls that you're getting uh, to render the game, which increases your frames. Mm -hmm. So 
they kind of hid it behind the fog, but I gotta say, the fog on Sumari, oh my god. They have never added something like that in squad where it limits your visibility. And I gotta say, uh -huh. that fog adds a whole new dynamic. It, it feels creepy, it's got this kind of eerie feel to it where you don't know what's down that long street. Because that street runs for maybe 200, 300 meters and you can't see all the way down it. So that, that road and the fog, it's just great. What do you think about uh, Sumari Puga? At first, I thought it was a little off-putting, a little weird, because like I'm I'm in like this desert map with like you know like all these mud huts and stuff, and it's like foggy. It just felt kind of like uh, felt kind of like I don't know. It's just out of place. Out maybe. of place, yeah. But I got used to it, and it was. It's actually it has a really nice dynamic to the gameplay because because before you know you, you couldn't cross streets sometimes if the enemy team had it locked down properly, and now it's like uh, everyone just kind of gets forced in like close combat. And, and the flags are much tougher to fight for. Everyone's around the same points. It's great. Hyper, any thoughts? Uh, it definitely changes the dynamic of how you're going to be playing now. Uh, I've noticed that now that we have a fog, I'm running down the streets more often, a little more careless, I'd say. Uh, but I'm sure that'll be, I don't know, maybe fixed a little bit later on. But however, right now, I think that's going to be uh, the changing dynamic on that map is people are just going to be more in the open now. Right. I think um, definitely for our ops. Oh my god, I'm thinking about Foxheart. I'm, si I'm thinking god, about Nathan yeah. Watch. Squad ops with this new fog and this new kind of eerie feeling, it's just going to increase the immersion. Really going to bring out some crazy uh, and insane moments. Um, but yeah, so as you were saying, Penn, the uh, level of detail and, and you know the draw calls for larger maps, you know, maps that aren't hidden behind the fog and behind the, the, the uh, dust and, and that kind of layer that limits visibility um we we played on kohat i believed a, a couple times and kohat actually the frames are you know still pretty good like 80 to 100 frames I'm, I'm still getting on kohat without visibility and i think that might have something to do with the level of detail more so than draw calls simply because they changed kind of the textures on the russian soldier and on the russian uh, and on the vehicles um what was your experience on kohat like On Kohat, uh, I think I played it once so far. It's, <laughs> I've been on since uh, since it was dropped. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I noticed my frames had always been kind of high on that, um, so I I didn't really feel much change, um, and I couldn't really tell the difference uh, what the the detail kind of at a distance. But I, I think I think with those kind of maps, the ones that are a bit larger, uh, lots of open spaces. I mean, just by how how they're designed, there's not a whole lot of structures like in Samari. You know, you're you're running through a city the entire time. There's lots there to render. Um, so with Kohat, at least at this point, you know, having fewer structures definitely helps uh, to keep performance up. Hyper, uh, I think you played on uh, Kohat once as well, right? Yeah. What were your so, thoughts? Uh, the pink camo. I don't. That's. Uh... I gotta let that grow on me, I guess. Uh, although I do say that you definitely blend in a lot more now with that. I noticed that when I was playing, people couldn't really tell where I was at, so that helps out. Uh, the running is brutal now on that on that on that type of map where there's a lot of hills. Oh, because they they slow down the running now, and especially when you're on a hill, it's it's even slowed down even more. So it's it's kind of sucks trying to get around to places when you're on foot. But I also do like that they're trying to slow it down too at the same time, so we're not always rushing to point to point. Right. So, but being the open map, yeah, I can see that that's going to be better to the draw distance being rendered that down because there's not that many stuff going on. And I just pretty much, yeah, agree with what Penn is saying that these maps, they're they definitely benefit most from this type of upgrade. So let's talk about um, some new things that they added in addition to the frames. Let's talk, let's talk about the Crows Humvees. Uh, I know that everyone here pretty much had a chance to play with the Crows Humvees, or at least saw the Cro Crows Humvees in action. What do you guys think of the new Crows Humvee as well as the Rocket Techie? So I, I remember when I first heard that they were bringing the Crows in, and I was like, I was thinking they were just going to have a screen, kind of like the BTR, it's just like a scope, and, and you can kind of zoom in and out. And then I got to use it in the test, and I was really actually like genuinely surprised that they actually have like the the whole the full RWS screen like around the the screen and stuff, and they have the actual reticle 
there's no thermals or anything, but it's still pretty cool. They they went in a lot of detail on uh, on the screen and stuff. They uh, I mean the, the material looks just the way it should. They, they even got like a couple of fingerprint swatches on a couple of the buttons. I was I was really impressed by that. But uh, aside from the aesthetic part. Uh, it's really nice to actually just be able to drive around in a Humvee and not get shot out of the turret instantly. That's probably the best part. And the magazines are much larger than the uh, normal turret M2. Hyperpen, did you guys get to use the uh, Crows Humvee at all? Well, let me tell you, I have not used it yet, but I've been demolished several times by it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're definitely effective uh, and, now and, and a little bit harder to hit that gunner. Yeah, so I think one of the most interesting things I didn't realize until I hopped into the gunner seat was they added turret resistance. You can't just snap around with your normal mouse sensitivity anymore. You actually get a little bit of resistance when you're moving the uh, mouse when you're in the turret. Did any of you guys realize that? I uh, heard that was added in. Yeah, so I think it's a lot more balanced now. You have this super powerful... Um, gun added to the top of these vehicles but now you actually have to have some time uh to acquire the targets and to change from one target to the next so i think it's a little bit more balanced now i think it it kind of comes in well with uh the new addition of uh bullet penetration for the larger caliber weapons i think it comes in well with uh not being able to move your turret as fast but it's kind of balanced out by the fact that you can penetrate buildings and stuff now Bullet penetration is a huge thing they add to squad. I mean, it changes the dynamics of so many things. Um, defending, attacking, even using vehicles as a whole, they actually feel like they serve another purpose now. They have a they have something that's unique to them and that only they can do. Um, for example, on Sumari, I think we were playing on Sumari, and the technical, or not the technical, but the Humvee rolled up and just started pouring lead into the second floor of the palace. And it was just a really effective way of actually suppressing the targets and actually being able to penetrate those walls to kill the people inside. What do you guys think of the uh, penetration and how do you think that will be received by everyone else and maybe some strategies you have thought of with penetration? Well, I've, uh, I've, I've gotten a few guys, uh, looks like through a wall. Um, at, at first, I didn't even realize that there was penetration yet. And so I was firing and thought for sure, oh, you know, there's no way I'm hitting him here, just suppressing him for my squad. Sure enough, we get on to the point that we're attacking, and I see two bodies up on the roof. So, um, yeah, it, it actually is, was, uh, it's not only suppressing, but it's effective at uh, taking out an enemy. But so I think what that means um, is that, you know, we're not going to have guys just hanging out on a roof prone because they know they're not going to be hit, you know, at a distance. You're actually going to need to get off that roof if you don't want to get shot. Or you're going to have to move from, away from that wall if you don't want to get shot. So um, it's, it's certainly going to change the speed of the game, I think. Because you've got to kind of um, move around your enemy instead of just holding, you know, in one position as you're taking fire from them. You can't just sit there in the corner anymore. You've got to move away from that wall. Right. It's definitely going to be something that everyone needs to learn is like, can I stay here? The vehicle's rolling around. Am I safe here? Do I have to move? I think it's going to add a lot more movement to infantry and a lot more strategy uh, because those vehicles do have a much more dangerous presence now. I think on a, a similar track uh, to penetration is that uh, suppression has been like vastly improved in, in this update. And some people might not, not think of it as an improvement. Because I know there's been a few games that have tried in the past having suppression make a large effect on, you know, your weapon and, and the screen and stuff. But it, like, I, I personally I appreciate just being actually actually able to like shoot towards an enemy and not necessarily know where he is, but be able to like reduce the effectiveness of his accurate fire. And I think that's going to make this game, at least for me, a, a bit more immersive and better, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, I th yeah. Uh... Go ahead, Hyper. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, it's definitely going to make you think twice before you take cover. Like, uh, is this actually going to protect me or are they going to go to shoot through this, you know? And on top of with the, with the suppression effects that you're talking about, I like how they threw in the grenades, too. So when you have a grenade blow up next to you, it literally shakes your screen now. I thought that was really freaking cool. It, it definitely adds something. You know, I used to, starting when I initially started playing Squad, I was completely against the addition of any, you know, post-process effects or anything to kind of, like, you know, 
simulate suppression. But with this patch, I mean, I gotta say, OWI has completely changed my mind. I think that, you know, maybe they could even tweak it to be a little more intense. But mm -hmm. I think suppression is just something that I completely, you know, did not expect to have this kind of effect um, on my gameplay. And it's just an amazing experience. Like, when you're getting shot at, when you're shooting at people, grenades are going off. And you actually, it's not just, you know, a solid screen. Uh, it's, it's not just a solid... Um, picture it's actually happening you know you feel that you feel that yeah. presence of that frag grenade or those bullets whizzing over your head because it's actually you know simulated in the game yeah i think this really all touches on immersion and i think there's no doubt that with alpha 8 uh there's much more it's it's a more, much more immersive um with the addition of the screen shake on explosions um, just as you know, uh, suppression causes your screen to go a little blurry. Explosions should be causing you to your screen to shake, and it should disorient you. And I think they're they're certainly effective with that. I'm, when I first jumped in, my first round, uh, it, it was on Samari, and explosions were going off, and I was like just freaking out. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know where the enemy was. It's a great addition, for sure. Definitely. And hopefully, you know, we'll see them retouch it and improve it and, you know, add some more cool things. Um, but yeah, I think they did a really, really solid job with suppression. Like, really solid. It wasn't too much. It wasn't too little. It was a perfect amount for the first iteration. So, moving on from, um, you know, penetration and the Crow's Humvee suppression, let's talk about the Rocket Techie. The Rocket Techie is the first iteration huh. of indirect fire support squad. What's your guys' experience with it so far? Oh my goodness, that thing is so hard to aim, and it's so <laughs> random. Like, you barely touch the keys, and it it, it it throws it up. You barely touch the S to come, it come down, and it throws it really down. Like, you have to really tap your keys to control that. And, of course, you can't turn it left or right. I mean, it's, it's stationary. You have to move up or down. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's really random. It's harder to figure out where the rocket's going to go, which is... To be expected. I mean, it's a freaking helicopter rocket pod. They're not always going to be straight and true. So, but yeah, with the time that I dealt with it, wow, that's that's going to get some uh, really hard to get used to. Yeah, I definitely think that. I mean, it's insanely hard to use. You have no idea how far it's going. You have to control the uh, the uh, elevation of the rocket, and then to move it left or right, you actually have to move the vehicle. It's yeah. extremely difficult to use, but it's it's definitely awesome to hear and see. What I think uh, we're going to have to start doing is resetting targets. Have experienced rocket techie gunners who know exactly where on the map they need to be, how high they need to aim to, to hit predetermined targets. So either flags or possible or potential fob locations, you know, and kind of have those places memorized. Yeah. Simply because on the spot adjustments right now are just really hard to do. And Puga, what are your thoughts on the rocket tech? I think, pretty much like you said, it's going to either require a really experienced crews. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. It is going to require really experienced crews, driver, the fucking gunner, and then a spotter watching for their shots. And people are going to have to figure it out. There's going to have to be a process. I mean, if you want to use it effectively, is you're going to have to do it right. And then there's also... Uh, like you said, you can have pre-spotted targets and people that know what they're doing, aim for the right spots, do the right things. That's it's going to be a lot of it. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a huge learning curve for the uh, general public to get a handle of that. Penn, what do you think Rocket Techies will do for squad ops? For squad ops, I I think um, what you said about having a like a designated. Um, I think for squad ops, you know, you, we're going to need to have guys on it that really know what they're doing and i think for that it'll take some practice <laughs> probably right. on jensen's range um it's uh it's gonna be probably ending up being it's like a separate squad or there's gonna be you know like like a vehicle squad i could see a vehicle squad taking the rocket techie and uh just being kind of separate from the rest of the team um and uh you know with an effective gunner on it um it's it's going to be deadly it's going to be a deadly addition <laughs> and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out i definitely think it's going to make for some 
really cinematic moments either you know seeing them fall onto a enemy position or getting even hit by them so definitely yeah. can't wait for uh for the rocket techies to be perfected both in public and in private play so the last thing i guess we'll really talk about here is with the addition with all these additions with all these new players coming back you know squad always sees a massive drop in in effective squads in you know proper play simply because of all the learning curves that the new people are jumping into and all of these new players here learning the entire game from scratch what do you think um what do you think players can do to help you know teach these new players and what do you think what advice can you give new players to help them overcome these learning curves hyper uh don't come into this thinking that it's like battlefield or cod <laughs> just get that out of your mind right now i mean seriously it, you can't you can't rush a point uh you, you can't really sit far from a point either within that game in battlefield being a sniper you know i mean you really have to take your time you really have to talk to your other squads like before you jump into this game or the match starts make sure you're talking to your other squad leaders put up some kind of a uh uh some kind of defense or plan in action to take what you need to do on that map uh you really really need communication i mean that's really the biggest key in this game is communication you gotta have that if you don't have that everything's gonna fail if you if one group does their own thing and the other one does their own thing you, you're not gonna win you're you're gonna lose i see it time and time again and it's definitely coming back right now just a short time i've been playing this i've i've seen squads just lose points really quick just because they they, they don't talk to each other now uh, so, yes, my main point is just talk to each other, make a plan of action before the game starts, and stick to it and try to do as best you can and take it slow. Very good point, Cyber. Penn, anything, uh, any advice you could give to new players trying to overcome some of these learning curves? Any advice for them to tackle these you know, very complex and you know, there's no real learning material out there for them to actually read up on? What, what, what do you have to say to those players? Take advantage of Jensen's range. Uh, it's a great sandbox. Um, you know, it's got most of the vehicles. It's got all, you know, all of the um, deployables. You can pick any weapon and uh, practice. Practice with all the, you know, grenade, grenade launchers, RPGs. Um, know how to use your weapon effectively. And then additionally, I would say once you're, you know, in game on a squad, listen to your squad lead and uh communicate solid and puga being you know the leader one of the main leaders of sott what do you have to say for um new players that want to learn i think it all really comes down to communication this game's kind of you know sort of simulates some of the stuff you might come across in real life in a way and even there in in the real world communication is absolutely key so if you're going to work on you know anything it would be mature calm constructive clear communication using your words talking to people if no one else is talking to you well they're fucked up that's not your you're bad and if you're going to come into the game and you know just drop yourself into a squad lead spot communicate and and you know at least learn the game while you're learning that as well because, I mean, you know, if, if you think you have what it takes to, to lead a squad, at least at least try to get better at it. And then, you know, for the love of God, use a squad lead chat because uh, nothing irks people more when they're in the squad lead chat than and not hearing anything back. And if no one talks back to you, keep playing. That's not your fault. They're fucked up. Keep playing. Go to another game. And, and eventually you'll come to some really good matches. They'll be really good for you and the way you play and you'll you'll learn from it and you'll gain experience from it and it all comes down to communication that's what this game is like founded on it's the basis of this game it's the most important part yep pretty much thank you uh yeah thank you all for showing up today really appreciate uh you helping with the podcast if you're listening and you'd like to get on some squad ops action go ahead and sign up at squadops.gg. we host one life events structured events uh we have a whitelist server we have training for both public and private players and you know we're pretty open and uh you know helping community we want to help players um so definitely come on pop by if you see any of the other players with the ops tag go ahead and ask them questions um we're here to help the community be a better place 
And if you like what we do, go ahead and check out our forums and see what else we got going on. But other than that, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.